Hey everybody, it's me for Girly here, and I'm finally getting around to producing this do-it-yourself arrow cloner tutorial everyone has been asking for. After a year and a half of testing, excluding instances in which I let the reservoir get too warm, my DIY arrow cloners have consistently produced a 100% clone rate. Watch through the end for various tips on how to achieve the same. Let's start by taking a quick look at some of the equipment and tools we need. A water pump rated around 200 gallons per hour to feed your manifold, one male to female connector, four 90 degree corners, three T's, and two 10 foot long pieces of pipe, all one half inch PVC. One or two packs of two inch cloning pucks, I prefer the firm style, a PVC saw, electric drill, two inch hole saw, and a handful of spray emitters. The PVC primer and glue is unnecessary and I didn't end up using it, a sleeve of two inch nut pots, and of course your tote from the local hardware store. While there are both diamond and square pattern lids, the diamond lids seem to have a more durable plastic to them. Grab yourself a piece of paper and a marker and trace a template from one of the diamonds in the lid to make drilling your holes much easier and more precise. Next I will use a ruler to measure the middle point of my template so I know where to place the starter bit. Cut a hole in your center mark and place your template on each diamond to mark your starting spots. Next, grab your electric drill with your 2 inch hole saw attached and begin cutting your holes. Be careful not to press too hard so you don't break the lid. Some hole saws do not come with a center starting bit, but I've heard running your drill in reverse will help stabilize your cut in that situation. Either way, slow and steady usually does the trick. As a side note, this is the 17 gallon version tote which has 22 sights in the lid. The 27 gallon tote with the square pattern lid you see on my Instagram and in earlier videos has a total of 35 sites. What size you choose is up to you and your garden's needs. I find that a 4 bulb 2 foot panel covers these perfectly. Vacuum, scrape, or otherwise clean the plastic scraps from your lid and reservoir in preparation for dropping in your 2 inch net pots. While the net pots are not entirely necessary, they will save you a lot of frustration from dropping your pucks and therefore clones through the lid. Then you have to fish them out of the reservoir and it will quite frankly just upset you. Don't be cheap and go spend a few bucks on these. Either way, snip off the bottom net portion of the pots as we are only using these as support collars, not actual hydroponic pots. Keeping the plastic netting on will cause your roots to get tangled and will become a major problem when it comes time to transplant. As I mentioned, I prefer to use the firm style 2 inch pucks as they not only hold the clones better, but seem to hold up for more uses as well. That being said, always clean your reservoir inside and out, including the pucks, in between uses. You don't have to insert the pucks until you are ready to put the aero cloner into use, but we'll fill her up now for demo purposes. Lastly, we have to build the manifold for the spray emitters. Measure the inside dimensions of your tote and take about 4 to 6 inches off both the length and the width to get the maximum dimensions of your manifold. We will be creating a manifold with three parallel pipes connected together at the ends, being fed with our pump from the bottom center. Don't forget that your pipe will be inserted into the fittings, so you will lose a couple inches from each side. The golden rule is measure twice, cut once. Or at least, in my experience, it's better to cut too big than too small. You can see I form the outer perimeter of my manifold first, then make the additional cuts to add the centerpiece. This just helps me visualize what I'm doing while I do it, but you should be able to trust your own schematic if your math isn't horrible. Now of course we couldn't get through this process without some sort of hiccup, and my attempt at trying a new brand of pump is what did it. Unfortunately this brand and or the smaller pumps use different fittings than I have used in the past, so I just ran over to HydroPros to pick up the same pump I use for the larger aero cloners. I also grabbed two different size male to female adapters originally, but fortunately one of them is correct. I think the boxes at the store were just mixed up a bit. Either way, at 250 gallons per hour, we're not quite hitting overkill, but I wouldn't go any larger than that. Use one of the included o-rings to create a watertight seal and screw on the adapter. Lastly, you will have to cut a riser to connect your pump to your manifold. The height of your manifold will depend on the depth of your reservoir and the stem length of your clones, but ideally you want the manifold to be spraying about 1-2 to two inches below your stems. Direct spray could potentially cause rot or other issues, while too far away could mean the clones are not receiving enough water. Double check that your pump and manifold setup fits properly before beginning the most tedious part of the DIY process, installing your emitters. The style of spray emitters you choose will make or break your cloner. While I am attempting to use these 360 degree red version, I have found that they cannot be used with these totes. Not only do they spray 360 degrees in a horizontal fashion, but they also have an angled top to spray upwards as well. 
This causes water to leak through the seal, or lack thereof, on the lid, and you will likely drain your reservoir within a matter of days. I would recommend finding the style emitter with a flat top so it does not spray upward. I believe they are the green version, assuming you are buying the same brand as I. Just take a close look before purchase. Drill holes along the top of your manifold for each emitter. The holes should be anywhere from about 2 to 5 inches apart for even coverage. As I mentioned, screwing in the tiny emitters is tedious and can get frustrating, but just find the right size hole and wear gloves to protect your hands from getting torn up. Once you have them installed, screw on your manifold and your cloner will be ready for use. My secret for a 100% cloning success rate is to keep your reservoir cool. Water temperature in the mid 60s is great for enticing root growth. Run a small fan to circulate the air around it, 100 watts or so of T5 or CFL lighting 18 hours a day, and in about 10 to 14 days, you should have spaghetti roots all up in that res. Check out my Instagram at Fergroli for more tips and photos. Subscribe here for more video updates. And as always, good luck and grow big.